Our next topic is educational use. When we say educational use, what we mean is a face-to-face -face classroom, because this part of the law was written back in the 1970s. In the context of a face-to-face -face classroom environment, for strictly educational purposes, there are no limitations on the performance and display of copyrighted work. So the limitations in terms of educational purposes are basically that it has to be something to do with your curriculum and your learning objectives. It can't be anything for extracurricular activities, faculty development, conferences, staff meetings, or anything else. And the limitations in terms of performance and display are basically that it can be putting images or art or text up on a screen, playing recordings including documentaries, movies, TV shows, commercials, film strips, or anything like that. They can be playing audio recordings of music, oral histories, or anything of that sort. It can also be live performances, whether musical, dramatic, poetry readings, dance. There are no limits as long as it's just performance and display. So educational use does not cover making or distributing copies or derivative works. The advantage here is that you do not have to make a clip or excerpts of what you want to use in the classroom for performance and display. You can show, play back, or perform the entire work as long as it's for purposes that are connected to your learning objectives and done in the context of a face-to-face -face classroom. Next, we'll talk about the TEACH Act. The TEACH Act is the somewhat more restrictive analog of the educational use exemption for the online learning context. The TEACH Act is also somewhat unique in that it applies to some colleges and universities, but not others. The way the law is written, the institution has to meet certain criteria, and if they do meet the criteria, then they can take advantage of the provisions of the TEACH Act. The best way to find out if your institution is TEACH Act compliant is to ask your copyright office or your library. If your institution is TEACH Act compliant, then it works sort of like a more restrictive educational use exemption, except it's for online learning inside the LMS. So just like educational use, the TEACH Act allows performance and display of copyrighted materials like images and audio and video files, but it doesn't allow making derivative works or distributing readings. When you use a piece of multimedia under the auspices of the TEACH Act, there are some restrictions. First, your institution has to be TEACH Act compliant. Second, the material has to be legally obtained and legally acquired you can't use a pirated copy or a bootleg. If there is a born digital copy of the material, you need to acquire that. But if there is no born digital version, then it's okay to digitize your traditional media copy. Now that you have your digital multimedia that you want to put online, it's important to remember that you can only use it in the LMS, inside a particular course, so that it's only available to the students enrolled in that course for that term. If your institution offers something like a streaming media server, you should make use of that because it provides an additional layer of protection against downloading by the students. You can't post it online, in e-reserves, or in email. You also can't keep an online library or archive of multimedia that you frequently use. The course itself has to provide a statement about copyright law, and the multimedia that you embed needs to be marked with the fact that it's copyrighted and citation information so that the copyright owner can be identified. Within those guidelines, if it is a non-fiction or non-dramatic work, you can embed the entire thing. If it is a fictional, dramatic, or otherwise artistic work, then you can embed as much of it as you need, but no more. This goes back to what we talked about earlier where U.S. copyright law protects creative works more strenuously than factual works. I want to clarify that when I use the word embed in this context, I mean that you have possession of a file which you either put on your institution's streaming server or upload it directly into the course itself. Services like YouTube and SlideShare provide what they call embed codes. That is a different kind of embedding. And for copyright purposes, a YouTube or SlideShare embed code counts as linking, not copying, so you don't have to worry about the copyright. 